got a lot of work orders to close out. The system's not cooperating. I'm about ready to rip out my hair. Maybe it's not me. Maybe it's my database system after all. We're going to cover that right here. Coming up next on Better Biomed. Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I would like to cover medical equipment databases or CMMS systems. There are many of these software packages on the market and hospitals are buying them up. You're going to move between hospitals. You're going to get a, a new database system with every single one. It's guaranteed. They're not all good. Some of them are kind of good. And as technology progresses towards maybe using mobile devices to help close work orders, it's going to get better. But right now, oh, it's not that good. And I'm talking about you, Navolo. I'm talking about you. Your workflow is horrible. You're not that fast. <laughs> You're not always accurate. And your workflow is horrible. There's many other systems on the market. We've got maintenance connection. We got what, four rivers, three rivers, whatever you want to call it. There's Medimizer, uh, Asset Essentials, Accruent. There's a whole bunch of them. And they all do about the same thing. They manage your database and also your work order system. So you can set your scheduling for your scheduled maintenance. You can schedule um, contractors, it handles your POs, your parts, inventory and ordering processes. They do a bunch of stuff, but they don't always do it well. And you see, there are certain things that a medical equipment management system needs to do. Number one, the number one thing that they need to do. It needs to be intuitive. If any of you guys are making a medical equipment management system and you're watching this video, it has to be intuitive. Anybody should be able to walk up to it and kind of with minimal training, figure out how to do what they need to do. Open a work order, close a work order, retire an asset, add an asset to record, Sometimes it's just so frustrating because it's such an easy task and you guys just fail so miserably at the one thing that you had to do and that is to make a software package that is intuitive. That's the number one thing. Remember, there's technicians of all ages. You'll have young guys, you'll have senior citizens, and you'll have everything in between using your software. It has to be intuitive, guys. The number two thing. It has to be fast. It has to be fast, guys. When I switch between menus, if I'm ordering a part, if I'm dropping a part to a work order, if I'm closing work orders, if I'm opening a work order, I need that system to be quick. I don't need lag, and I don't need it to crash when there's lag. You would think that that's not asking for very much, but it really is. These systems, the more users you have, the larger your inventory pool, it's going to get laggy and you're going to lose some data here and there. There's nothing more frustrating than losing data. So it has to be fast, guys. That's number two. Number three, it has to be accurate. If I'm going to run a report, and I'm going to run reports, guys, if you are watching this and you're making medical equipment software or you're making a determination on what software package you are going to buy, it has to be accurate and I have to be able to run reports. I'm going to run a report on what my hours are for the day. I'm going to run a report for my team to see how much equipment they have. I should be able to run reports. I should be able to save reports. I can't even save reports in the system that I have right here. It says that there's a security issue with me saving reports and I get it. This system here, they might be able to modify it in the future, but that really upsets me. I can't even save a report. Like I'm going to really clickety clack through all those options every single day that I want to run a report and I'm going to run these reports every day, every day. I'm going to see where my team's at, how, what my hours are, what their hours are, what equipment that we still have left after a day's worth of maintenance. As a team leader, I'm going to pull a report that shows how much essential equipment, uh, high risk or how much life support devices we have. I'm going to run that report 
daily. And I have to run that stupid report with every single option. I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to show you. Don't worry. That's coming up. And not always does it come up with the right data. It's, it's just amazing. One, one stupid little thing I want to add there. I tried to run a scheduled maintenance report today. And believe it or not, like preventive maintenance, you would think it's just one option, right? Like preventive maintenance, unscheduled maintenance, scheduled maintenance, yada, yada. Preventive maintenance should be one option on the drop down. There was four or five different preventive maintenance. And if you don't have the right one clicked, your results are going to be zero or it's going to be minimal. Why do I have four different versions of preventive maintenance on my drop down menu to select from? Come on, guys. I need the database to be accurate and I need the results when I pull a report. I need those results to be accurate too. Novolo, guys, you're failing there. Really bad, really bad. All right. Let's talk about one of the most important things that a medical equipment management system will do it's got to have a good workflow. Every single technician out there that's seeing this video, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It has to have good workflow. When I open up a work order, I want to start at the top with equipment ID, and I want to go down from there. As soon as I put that equipment ID in, I want to see a couple things populate, the model and the serial number. As you work your way down through the work order, it should have certain things like, what's the reason for the work order? What are the technician's notes? I should be able to attach files rather easily to the work order. And as we get down to the bottom of the work order, that's where I should end my closing remarks and uh, have file attachments. At the very beginning, I, I don't understand why I have certain menus like, what was the menu that I, I had to deal with today? Projected start time. Really guys, projected start time? The start time is when my hours, when I drop my labor to the work order, or when I accepted the work order, that's my projected start time, it's right now. I'm not gonna project it for two hours from now. Are you kidding me? Who designs this software? I'm telling you right now, the workflow has to be very smooth from the beginning of the work order all the way down to the bottom. And it doesn't make any sense in Novolo. I've, I've used two different versions of Novolo. I've used the GE version, which they have their customizations. There's ISO and 9001, whatever you wanna call it. And then I've used the one for my current hospital and it's a new implementation. So they're working through some of the bugs, but it's still Novolo. It's still got the same problems. So the problem with Novolo, we're gonna see it in just a moment. You're gonna be jumping all over the work order and you're gonna go to different tabs, which are gonna take you to a different page. And if you don't save your data before you leave the page for any reason, you lost all that data. So now you're playing catch up. You're going back to your original start page of your work order and you're trying to figure out what data did I lose because now I wanted to add a PO or I wanted to drop labor to the work order. You have to do all that from separate tabs or separate pages. If you don't save every single time you click on a tab, you lost that data and now you're playing catch up, trying to figure out what you lost. Novolo, guys, you're messing up there. So Novolo fails on every single point here and we're gonna go over some of that right now I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about this is a Novolo work order and I'm pretty sure there's not gonna be a sensitive data that's gonna pop up in this work order so we're gonna go over that right now I'm gonna show you what a Novolo work order looks like from brand new and I'm gonna show you why it's so messed up okay guys here we have our Novolo work order and you can see my data up here and they have these tabs that nobody ever seems to really use right here. They're not really tabs. They're just showing you what stage of the work order that you're in. Absolutely useless information. Nobody uses that. The best thing they have here is that they have a save indicator right here at the top. And I can scroll all the way back up and save stuff. Uh, which is a bother. But anyway, uh, we'll start right here. Uh, I can drop to an asset or I can drop to... A different type of work order which is a location that's kind of cool um, that's a good feature because now I can charge it to say the operating room instead of charging it to a device it's what they call a Zulu work order or 
clinical miscellaneous work order. You know, every every other place has a, a work order that they call it where you drop um, anonymous time to. If you have like a meeting with a director or something like that, you can drop it to the location. Do you see these little buttons right here in the top of the Novolo? See how it says reassign, pending acceptance, ready for work, work in progress, on hold, work complete. Certain options in the work order will and will not be available based on what button is highlighted way up here in the upper right hand corner. So you have to come up here, click on something and then navigate back down to the bottom of the work order to get something done. These little buttons right here are one of the most annoying new features of Novolo. If anything, you would think that the buttons would be up here in the header. Like closing work orders, submit for approval, yada yada. That should all be up here by the save bar. Nope, it's right here. I have to scroll up in the work order to find it and enable other options further down in the work order. Extremely annoying. Now I'm going to show you another very annoying feature. You can see you have some buttons up here at the top, your save bar. But there's also those aforementioned buttons that are in the upper right hand corner. You can see I have a selection of tabs right here in the middle of the, the work order. I have a selection of tabs down here at the bottom. And here's the most annoying thing. Let's say I type something into one of these fields and then I click on a different tab. If you do not save the work order in between clicks like let's say I type something in here and I want to go to financial if I do not click save right here that data is lost it's very annoying and you can tell I have stuff way down here this down here at the very bottom this is where I add my time my labor you would think that labor would be one of the tabs right up here near the top which by the way, this is the middle of the work order. You would think that resolution would be here at the end of your tabs, right? Not the first tab down here. It, it makes no sense, guys. It makes no sense. Down here, this is where we drop itemized costs like parts and labor. And then this is where we can request POs for this work order. And that's at the bottom of the work order. Why do we request parts and drop our time and request POs. Why is that at the very bottom of the work order? So I have to type in some of my data and then I have to scroll all the way down to the bottom. Then I have to go all the way up, clickety clack some of those buttons that I showed you at the very top. And then I have to come back down to the halfway point and fill in some other stuff. The workflow is atrocious guys, but that's Novolo. All right guys, here's just one thing I got to show you that really just pisses me off. Look right here, I have work location, I have current asset location. And then if I come up here, and I click on the asset information tab, and I can pull up all the wonderful information on this guy. It also has a little field down here called last known department. So we have three different fields that say where this thing is. TMC, or anesthesia, or anesthesia, or what is, what is anesthesia? Where's that? It's all over the hospital. It could be anywhere. It's insane. Given that's a database problem, but that just shows you some of the problems with this database is that there are three fields that tell you where this item is. That's a problem. Three fields. Now, when I say that this system has a lot of ridiculous options, that's just a couple of them right there. There's too many fields that tell you where this item potentially could be. So guys, this would be my fourth take on this video because I kept trying to record the Nuvolo work order so I could show you the workflow and it's just not happening. Either my camera doesn't agree with the refresh rate of the display so it's constantly trying to focus or there's critical and probably sensitive information that keeps making its way into the frame. Sorry guys, I wish I could show you exactly what pisses me off about Nuvolo. I can't because of privacy issues and it's already like I'm walking on eggshells at my work because of recording video and trying to teach people. And if you Novolo guys are watching this video, I'm gonna tell you one thing right now. Maybe designing workflow software just isn't for you. It's kind of like when my wife walks in and 
I'm sitting there singing them a, one of my favorite songs and she just shakes her head and she's like, Justin, some things just aren't for you, man. You can fix everything, but maybe you can't sing, bud. Just saying, maybe you guys just can't design workflow software. It's kind of like uh, the Leatherman, you know? Nivolo is like the Leatherman that I got over here in my toolbox. If I'm in my shop, I've got a Leatherman in there. It does a lot of things, but it does them all not very well. So I never grab it. If I need wire strippers, I'm gonna go grab the wire strippers. If I need a flathead screwdriver, I'm gonna grab a flathead screwdriver because it's gotta have a purpose. It's gotta be a tool that's going to enable me and assist me with my mission, not inhibit me. Nivolo inhibits. Sorry guys, that's the truth. And that's all I got for you today. I would strongly recommend you guys not get Nivolo. It's got a whole bunch of options for bean counters. And if you're bean counter, that's fantastic. That's good for you. Your technicians are going to be absolutely miserable. Now, I actually left the job because I did not want to deal with Nivolo. It was a fantastic job. I loved working with the people there. I just could not handle Nivolo. It drove me absolutely crazy. And GE's version of Nivolo drove me even crazier because there's all sorts of clickety clacks that you had to have just to close a work order. Like one of the options that we always had to click on was did you use ESD protection? On every work order. I'm talking if you tack something to the wall and you went ahead and created a work order for it, did you use ESD protection? Well, uh, let's see. No, I did not. I didn't. And 99% of your work orders are not going to have ESD protection. Most technicians don't even have ESD mats on their desk. And if they do, when was the last time they tested their ESD straps? Do they even know that there's a one mega ohm resistor in that? Do they really? When was the last time they tested it? You're supposed to test it every single time. I bet you they don't. That's all I have for you guys. Sorry to make this such a long and drawn out video. Medical maintenance equipment software. It's supposed to be user friendly, fast, accurate. And Nivola just isn't. Thanks for watching guys.